بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد السلام عليكم to all students and everybody listening out there inshallah I hope you have had a good week today inshallah we will be starting the chapter on how to perform masa over the leather socks and the khufain Khufain means socks made out of leather. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in the Quran, Yuridu Allahu bikum al yusra wa la yuridu bikum al usra. But Allah, He intends to make things easy for you and He does not intend to make things hard or difficult for you. It is revealed in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 185. Now from the things which Allah Ta'ala has made easy for us in our ibadah, in our worships, is that He has given us the leniency to perform masa on the khufmain in place of washing the feet in ablution or in ghusl, in wudu or in ghusl. So obviously to to perform masa on the leather socks, it's far easier than to wash the feet, both the feet, whether you are a resident or whether you are a traveler. And now, especially if you are a traveler, it is far easier to wash your, to sorry to perform masa over your feet as opposed to washing them. So, first, the chapter begins by giving you the ayah of the Quran. And I'm giving you a short, brief explanation of that ayah. And now the Musannif is giving you the linguistic meaning of the word khuf. With khuf is a singular for the word khufain. And a khuf is that which is worn on the feet. And, and it has been manufactured from leather. From animal skin. People wear the leather socks in days of severe cold. And the intention here, and the intent here, are those hoofs, are those leather socks, and that which is in the meaning or under the meaning of leather socks, such as jorabain, sakhinain, that thick jorabs. Jurus are very thick socks. They are extremely thick socks. And nowadays you can find industrial socks which workmen or builders would wear that are extremely thick. And all and thick socks and only when the conditions which have been mentioned are fulfilled then masa will be permissible on extremely thick socks nylon socks or stockings do not come under that category normal cotton socks normal wooden uh, woolen socks sorry not wooden woolen socks will not come under that category normal nylon stockings will not come under that category socks which look or resemble anything like this picture here um, which is a leather sock which covers the ankle Masa is permissible on those socks Now the conditions for Masa to be permissible on the Khufain okay, I'm not going to keep translating the word Khufain leather socks again and again because it is a term which we should familiarize ourselves with and those things which are under the ruling of leather socks as we just mentioned the jorabain which are extremely thick the industrial thick socks which come under the ruling of khufain first condition that the socks when they are worn the leather socks when they are worn they are worn when the person is in full tahara, in a state of full tahara. It may be in a state of ghusl or it may be in a state of wudu. The socks must be worn on tahara. 
and it is not permissible to wear them when a person is not in the state of tahara, in a state of purity. So this differs from the ruling of plasters or splints or bandages which we did in the previous chapter. Furthermore, if you look at the footnote, it says in the footnote that it is not permissible to wear the leather socks in the state of Tayammum. So after a person has performed Tayammum, a person is not allowed to wear leather socks and perform Masa on the leather socks. You may wear leather socks, but when the time of Tahara comes and when you need to perform Wudu again or etc., you will must remove the leather socks. Masa is not permissible because indeed that Tahara is Tahara and Nakisa, it is incomplete Tahara when a person has performed Tayammum and that will not qualify for Masa or the Khufain. And the condition for wearing both of the Khufain is that it is Tahara to a Tahara Tamma and a complete Tahara. Okay, now number two. That the khufain, the khuf, the leather sock, when it is worn, it covers the entire foot, including the ankles, both of the ankles. So the leather socks cannot be such that it only covers the heel. It must go over the feet, over the instep. The, the instep is the top of the foot, the metatarsal bones, and it must cover the ankles, up to the ankles. And it is not permissible to perform masa on leather socks which are short and it does not reach the ankles. I apologize that um, the screen keeps going blue. It's because I'm trying to make the ring, the yellow ring appear here. So you can follow the text but um, for some reason it's not happening. The last bullet point on this page. And in the same manner, it is not permissible to perform masa on a leather sock which has a large tear inside it, or a small tear, or a small rip, which is the size of three toes, from the small toes of the feet. Asabi means fingers, but here it translates as toes. So. If that small tear is the, to the size of three small toes, then masa will not be permissible on such a leather sock. And if there are small, different small tears or different tears or rips, which do not reach the size of the small toes when they are put together, when they are added up together, then on that quantity masa will be permissible. So it's quite a very quite a very simple ruling. If you have a tear on the upper side of your leather sock on the instep and then you have a tear beneath on the sole or tear somewhere else on the sock, you add that together and see if it comes to the dis to the quantity, to the size <coughs> of the small toes. And if it does or oh, it goes over, Masa is not permissible. If it is just about to that size, Masa is permissible on that leather sock. Number three, that it is, that it is possible to successfully walk in the Khufain and it is not permissible to perform Masa on the leather sock which has been made from glass or wood or sticks or iron. So that straw sandals also come under that category. His socks or anything manufactured from straw or anything else. Now in the modern day which we live in, there are socks available out in the market which are what you call hydrophobic socks. Hydrophobic is a scientific term which simply means water hating. So these socks have a bilayer inside and they have a layer inside them 
which makes them waterproof and they look just like normal socks but when you pour water over them the water comes off the surface runs off the surface and it does not penetrate to the skin on those types of socks massa is permissible and people refer to them as wudu socks furthermore if you have a sock or socks which if you wore you are able to walk in them successfully for at least 5 kilometers or more to at least 5 kilometers without the socks ripping or tearing uh, then masa is permissible on such socks nylon stockings i must emphasize again and normal socks cotton socks woolen socks which we wear do not come in under that category okay, we cannot walk five kilometers with nylon socks and they won't tear or rip okay, very very thick industrial socks maybe so maybe i'll be able to walk that distance without them ripping but these socks which are now available hydrophobic um, they are also called seal socks or skeel skins um, it is permissible to perform massa on such such um, socks I will just show you a website I'm not promoting these socks or nor do I work for the company on I am not promoting the socks I'm simply uh, letting my students and Muslim brothers and sisters know what's available out there to fulfill our religious requirements our Dini ibadah more simple so these leather these waterproof seal skin socks this is what they look like and as you can see they look just like normal socks but water will not penetrate through these socks and the ulamas, especially the ulamas in my area, they have looked at this, they have researched this, and they have given the go ahead that all of the requirements and conditions for masa on the leather socks is met with these socks. Hence, masa is permissible on these socks. Okay, I will emphasize again that I am not promoting th these socks. Or the company but I am letting all of you know what is available out there okay that's all it is I'm not on any kind of a commission or anything from the company okay moving on Masa will not be permissible on those socks which have been manufactured from glass or wood or sticks or even straw or metal or iron in the same manner must will not be permissible on thin normal socks normal thin socks which will tear or rip when we when they are walked in when a person walks in them in those socks number four that the, that the normal sock or the sock the jorab is such that it has a sole or a leather skin or that it is extremely thick underneath it. it has an extremely thick sole underneath it and this is the condition which is unique which is specific to a jorab which has been manufactured or manufactured socks which are made from something other than leather such as wool or anything similar to that now to go to explain to understand this the normal socks which we wear in daily life they are manufactured from cotton wool or nylon or polyester or other things which are synthetic which are man-made if they fulfill the requirements of the conditions of the leather socks only then is it permissible to perform massa on them on those socks today i've seen people they wear normal socks and they perform massa over the normal socks and the water seeps through etc and they read their salah in that instance in the hanafi school of thought especially the massa is not valid nor is the wudu 
nor is the ibadah carried out with that wudu or wusul. Because the stocks have not been have stocks do not meet the requirements. If you bring our attention to the footnote, the person who has um, written the kitab, the Musannif, he is explaining what the three different words mean. Muna'al and Mun'al is that which is put on the underside of the sock which is made of leather the, the, at the bottom of the sh sock such as shoes so it's made out of leather and it joins to the sock and the remaining two items is that the first, this one is Mujallad which means that the leather item has been placed on the top and the bottom of the sock and it has no boundaries for thickness there is no um, fixed amount of thickness that it has to be at and sakhin means thick and uh, with that explanation has already come in the above text and it says that al bidaya bidayatul mufti is the kitab from where that explanation has been taken okay so i hope that helps to explain the types of sock it has to be for a masa to be valid we are on condition number five that the person he performs masa on a place where the masa should be performed and the place where the massage should be performed on the leather socks is on the visible part of the foot. When a person places his or her foot down onto the ground, the upper part of the foot, the instep, where the metatarsal bones are, which is facing the person, the massage must be performed on that using the fingers. And the person will pull his pull the fingers from the toes of the feet up the instep of the feet towards his shin area. And the massa is not correct on the underside of the foot which is hidden or on the on the heel or the sides of the feet. The massa must be performed on the instep on the top of the feet. Okay, this shows that in our Sharia we follow the laws given by Allah Ta'ala and shown and demonstrated by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We do not follow our own logic. Whereas logic would dictate that the underside of the leather sock should be wiped because that is where dust or dirt would accumulate. The Sharia says we do masa on the top of the feet so we follow Sharia law. And the way shown to us by Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the last point made here is that whatever is worn on top of the sock, on top of the leather socks, such as Jarmuk, or anything similar to that, the condition is that Masa is permissible on it as long as all of the above conditions are met the jarmuk is what's known as a overshoe something which is worn over the sock in english the closest translation is overshoe now if the conditions are not met for the jarmuk then it is wajib to remove it and to perform masa on the leather sock itself or the leather socks themselves. Now I hope you have followed me as we've done that. Now the next chapter here is on the principles of Arkan of performing Masa and the methodology on how the Masa is to be performed. As you can see from the picture here it's quite obvious and quite simple to understand that we place our fingers on, from our toes and pull them upwards towards the shins of the of the leg 
that will suffice for the Masah. Allah Ta'ala has made our deen extremely easy for us to follow. So the Rukan, that is to perform Masah with three fingers from the smallest fingers of the hand. And the, and the method of performing the Masah is that the person he will place his finger the fingers of his right hand on the top of his um, leather socks of the right feet so the right hand on the right on the top of the right foot and he will place his left hands sorry or his left fingers of his left hand on the top of his left sock his left leather socks this is evident from the picture from this picture over here you can see the method of performing the masa on the leather socks and he will pull his fingers towards his shin area and he will keep a gap between her, his fingers when doing so that is a simple method which Allah has taught us via the Prophet and how to perform Masa. The last page of this chapter it talks about firstly the time period of when the Masa will start and how long it is valid for and the second part of this page talks about the things which will invalidate the Masa on the leather socks. So the person who is a resident the, for him his time of masa is approximately 24 hours which is one day and one night the person who is on a journey the person who is a musafir a traveler for him the period of masa is three days and three nights which is approximately 72 hours and the period the time will for his masa will begin from the time he is afflicted with a hadith, not from the time in which he wears the the khufain, the leather socks. Okay, now there is a difference here which needs to be understood. The time of masa, the duration for the masa does not begin when the socks are worn and the masa is performed, but it begins when the person is afflicted with a hadas, something which invalidates his masa. that is when the time begins not from the time when he has worn his socks so it gives you an example on the next sentence that if the person who is a resident in his own town in his own locality and he has performed wudu at the time of zuhr salah and he has worn the leather socks and he has remained in Tahara until the setting of the sun and just slightly before the setting of the sun and then he has been afflicted with the hadith so he has performed wudu and he has performed masa on the leather socks then the time of him performing able to perform the masa on the socks again it will end on the next day slightly before the setting of the sun so the time begins when the person has been afflicted with the hadith not from the time when he has worn the leather socks the next bullet point and if he ha if the resident has performed masa then he has become a traveler before his time has elapsed or he before his time has completed then he will fulfill the time for the traveller. The time for the traveller is th three days and three nights from the time when he has been afflicted with the hadith. So it gives an example that if this person here has begun to travelling, has started his journey, 
in the coming day, in the oncoming day after the Asr Salah. And indeed, he will complete his Masa for the remaining two days. He will extend the time of his Masa to the remaining two days. So he has completed one day, then he will add on another two days. And the last bullet point, that if the traveler has become a resident, he has become a Mukim, after he has performed a Masa on the leather socks, and it is less than one day and one night, he will complete the day and night as in the time frame of that of a Mukim. So traveler, he, he became a Hadith, he became afflicted with a Hadith at the time of Zuhr, let's say. And he has, before he has finished his journey, he has become a resident. Then he will complete his Masa for just one day and one night. Only that time frame will be allowed for him. And if he has become a Mukim, he has become a resident, Ba'adama Masaha, after he has performed Masa for one day and one night, he will complete the time for that, for that Masa. Okay. If there is anything which I have gone over and you are not sure, please get in touch. Uh, <coughs> now my health is quite been quite weak over the past few days. I apologize for this. Now the last chapter in this section is all of the things which will nullify the masa on the leather socks. And there are four points here with a caution at the end. The first point is that everything which breaks the wudu will also break the masa, because indeed the masa on the leather socks is a, what is known as a buddle from washing the feet. It is in place of washing the feet. Number two is that when the time of the masa has elapsed, that will also break the masa on the leather socks. And if this person his time for Masa ends or finishes while he is in Salah. Then his Salat has become battle. His Salah has become void. Number three, that he um, takes the leather socks off. All the socks they come off more than the size of his feet. Now this um, text here, Ila Sakil Khuf. Uh, towards the shin of the leather socks. It, what that means is that if the socks come off so much, so much that they are simply dangling off the feet, that would mean that they have come off, they are no longer on the feet, and that would invalidate the masa. <laughs> Number four, when his feet become wet with water, when the majority of his feet become wet with external water, that does not include sweat. And if the water has entered his feet and it has made his feet wet, it is wajib that he takes off his leather socks and he washes both of his feet. As there is a word of caution here that masa is not permissible on the amama or the topi, the skull cap. In place of masa of the head, what that means is that if somebody is performing wudu and he has a topi on, a skull cap, or a amama, a turban, and he wants to perform masa over the turban or the topi, the kalansuwa, that is not allowed. A person must perform masa of his head. And in the same manner, it is not permissible to perform masa on the burqa or the gloves in place of washing the face and the hands so if somebody is wearing gloves and it's winter they will have to remove the gloves and perform wudu and they'll have to remove the burqa and perform and wash the face and perform masa of the head etc now we finished the chapter on masa of the leather socks and I apologize, I have taken two weeks, I have been extremely ill. And we come to the section on the, the questions. 
So, who question the first section? Whoever is in the state of hadith and he wears the leather socks, then he intends to read salah. Will he remove both of them or is it permissible for him to perform masa on both of the leather socks? The answer is it is not permissible for him to perform masa on the leather socks because he has to be in a state of tahara, he has to be in the state of wudu or ghusl when he puts the leather socks on and thereafter if he is afflicted with the hadas he will then perform masa on the leather socks he cannot just put them on and then perform wudu. Question number two. What are the conditions for the permissibility of masa on the leather socks? The conditions such as they have to be waterproof, impermeable to water, they have to cover the ankles, or they have to be so strong <coughs> that a person can walk two or three miles, if not more, without them ripping or tearing. Question number three. What is the condition which makes it specific to perform masa on the jawrabain? And explain in detail or describe the method or, method or methodology of masa on the leather socks. We we'll leave that one to you to, to, to you to answer. The masa of the leather socks is a trait of the ahl sunnah wal jama, the ahl sunnah. Whereas we perform masa on top of the feet, on the instep, whereas logic will dictate that we should maybe wash on the underside of the foot. This is from the Athar of Ali Radallahu ta'ala anhu. So it shows that we follow the command given to us by Sharia. Now the next <coughs> section is asking us to choose a st correct statement to make this statement complete. So a condition for the permissibility of masa on the leather socks is that the leather socks are worn in the state of what? Is it tahara? In the state of tahara? Or after the tahara is complete, the tahara to tamma? Or is it after ghusl? So the answer is that it is the two leather socks are worn on tahara to tamma. Not just general tahara, but tahara which is complete. Of tahara. Tahara to tamma. But in Tahara, it is Tahara that in the state of Wadu or Ghusl. It is not the second statement. It is not, uh, Masa is not permissible on the leather sock in which there is a very large tear, a tear or a rip <coughs> or many small tears or rips which is to the extent of small fingers from the small fingers of the hand of five small fingers of the feet or is it the smallest toes of the feet three times over so the answer is <coughs> the third one it is to the extent of the three three small toes of the feet the third statement, the third bullet point. The time for the masa of a mukim is equivalent to the time of the masa for the musafir. Yomun ilalayl meaning day to night, from daytime to night time, or a day and night meaning 24 hours. And the answer is, a day and night, approximately 24 hours. The last bullet point. The time for the masa to be considered is from the time when the leather sock was, is it when the leather sock was worn or after the person has been afflicted by a hadas after he has worn the sock or is it the first masa after he has worn it after he has worn the leather sock 
So the answer is the middle one. The time of the master is considered after the person has been afflicted by a hadith, not from the time when he wore the sock or when he performed the wadu. <coughs> the next section of questions. It is not um, but permissible to perform masa on the leather sock, which is small. When it reach when it reaches the ankles, is that true or false? Is that correct or not? So in another way, the masa is not permissible on a small leather sock when it reaches the ankle. When the leather sock covers the ankle and it is above the ankle, the masa is allowed. So that statement I would say it is not correct because it says the abalagal kaabain. When it reaches the ankles, so when it has reached the ankles and it has covered the ankles, the masa is allowed. If it does not cover the ankles, the masa is not allowed. La yujuzul mas that the masa is not permissible on a leather sock which has been made from glass or twigs or branches or wood or metal. And the answer is. That is correct. The next bullet point. If the person has worn the leather socks before Fajr Salah, then he has he is afflicted with the hadas at the time of the rising of the sun at sunrise. Then he performs wudu before Zuhr Salah. The time which in which his masa will elapse is from the time of the day slightly before Zuhr Salah. Is that the correct statement or is that incorrect? It is time for Masa will end in the next day just before Zuhr Salah. So the answer is that is not correct because his time for Masa will begin at sunrise when he was afflicted with the Hadith. This sentence over here statement the masa starts at the time the person is afflicted with the hadas while he is wearing the leather socks which were worn in the state of tahara so he has performed wudu at fajr time and he has worn the leather socks the time does not begin then then at the sun at sunrise he is afflicted with the hadas that's when the time has begun so his so his um time will elapse the next day at sunrise, not at the time of Zuhr. The next statement. Everything which breaks the wudu also breaks the masa on the leather sock, as indeed it is a bundle for that. And that statement is correct. <coughs> <coughs> the last statement, the last bullet point. The wudu will break by the time of the masa finishing, by the time of the masa elapsing. Is that true or is that false? So that is true because the statement in the above text reads that if the person is in salah and is reading his salah, the time for his masa elapses while he is in the salah and his salah is Battle, his salah is void. It can only be void if his tahara is void. So from that statement we can deduce that that is the correct statement. And the wudu it breaks when his time elapses for the masa, though other kitas may state otherwise. And the last section for the questions of this chapter. <coughs> that is it correct for the person to perform masa in the following situations, the following scenarios? That if the person has performed masa on the bottom of his feet only, only on the bottom of his feet, the person has performed masa, is that correct? No, it is not correct. We have said before that that is not allowed, it is not valid. And the next statement is that if he has performed masa on his turban or in his topi, 
His skull cap is that allowed, it is not allowed to perform a sound on his am- amama. His fatty or his pugri, whatever word you use, it is not allowed. And the next statement, the next bullet point, next sentence. If he has worn the leather sock, then he wears something on top of it, such as a jarmuk, and it does not reach his ankles. <coughs> and the answer to my understanding is that the masa is not correct, because the jarmuk has not reached his ankles, even though underneath that he is wearing leather socks. In that situation, what I advise is that he removes his jarmuk and he does he performs massa on the leather socks and then he puts on his jarmuk again. If I am wrong in that, please correct me. And the last bullet point for today. If he has performed massa to the extent of three fingers, the small fingers of the feet from the small toes of the feet, is his massa correct or not? Answer is Masa is not correct simply because the masa has to be done with the fingers of the hand and not with the fingers of the feet, not with the toes, sorry, not with the toes of the feet. It is considered with the fingers of the, the three fingers of the hand.